Smart City is only going to happen if you manage to bring them all together and to assure that we have a unified idea of something. But the word smart city gets used in so many different ways that we thought it was useful in Bristol to talk about a programmable city to make it clearer what we were actually doing. So we have installed digital infrastructure across the city, which is owned by the city. That's fibre under the streets. It's a wireless mile uh, around the centre of the town. And then it's an IoT mesh across the whole city. And that infrastructure, that digital infrastructure, is managed through software-defined network, which allows something called network function virtualization. So it creates a programmable network. And that is, uh, that's how we got to programmable city. I guess there are two key dimensions that we've tried to introduce in the city to make it a very productive environment for stakeholders to, to innovate. One is to uh, integrate and introduce city-wide technological capabilities, including a, a data hub and a city-wide wireless network, a low-power wide area network, which means that the barriers to innovation are, lo are lowered. But perhaps more importantly, we've sought to establish a culture whereby collaborators can spend time together, both those with service and, 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 and uh, community needs, I guess, and those who are technology providers, so that they can work through together and, and co-produce solutions. You realise uh, when you start trying to solve the problem of having multiple actors involved in providing services to citizens, you are in fact having a connected ecosystem of, of different parties and those ecosystem partners need to provide their little piece of the puzzle in order to deliver a service. And what we have been looking at in the Milton Keynes example, among many things, are how do you get this business model together? Uh, which parties are making money and how? Uh, how do you look at the SLA chains across, uh, across a series of uh, different partners? It's not just managed by one party, it's managed by several. How do you approach things like uh, privacy and security? So it's all those kind of questions that, that need to be solved in, in a consistent fashion. I think is perhaps most powerful is a, a citizen engagement program that we have, where we have a, a web-based platform which allows citizens to uh, promote ideas uh, for things that they think will help, help improve their lives. And, and we've got a, a prize fund where we fund the very best ideas. And we also run a, a series of collaborative workshops working with our community action uh, organisation locally, so we actually engage people in talking about the challenges. So it's not data-led or, or technology-led, it's actually led by the, the needs of the citizens. And one of the things in our Bristol is Open project that we've, we're making central to it is this is not a project for the council, this is not a project for the university who are our two founders. This is a project for the whole city, which involves all different aspects of the city, be it health, be it startups, be it disenfranchised communities, be it the creative industries who are very big in, in Bristol. And actually it's that combination of different people being liberated to use digital technology to build a bigger, better city is exactly what we're about. So it's not a top-down command and control process but it's actually a liberating digital connectivity process. Cities aren't, aren't quite as good at uh, sharing, sharing ideas and solutions as they, they, they could be. I don't think that's because we're hugely competitive, although there's, there's always a, a bit of that. I just think it's uh, sheer cap capacity to, to have the time to, to spend with others, uh, exploring uh, you know, shared challenges, shared solutions and so on. I, I find a lot of the actual understanding of solutions is mediated through companies who will come and spend time, time with us and will tell us about what's going on elsewhere. Although increasingly through uh, events such as TM Forum Live, you know, we, we, we do get out and about a, a lot more now and, and spend time with technology providers and, and with other cities internationally to, to learn about what's going on. You have to make all these things happen so you can get data uh, from, from citizens and from, from different places in the city. So, so you can expose them, right, to, 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 to third parties. 
and while doing so creating the really the starting point for, for uh, sort of a lo local economy or data within a city. What is uh, the characteristic of uh, those ecosystems is that they, they cross a lot of different uh, traditional uh, silos and there is no more silos. Uh, now we, we need to live in a very interconnected uh, ecosystem and the different ecosystems uh, interact with each other uh, at the same time. So what is very important here is uh, to be able to enable those ecosystems and uh, an initiative such as FIWARE is absolutely essential. At the same time, it's very important that uh, we establish also this uh, uh, collaboration with uh, TM Forum and TM Forum can help a lot uh, because in those ecosystems what is important is to create the marketplace. Uh, it will not just be free uh, services, it will be a marketplace of services and those services will uh, be created according to different business models. The business models could be consumer, B2C, but also in some cases B2B or B2B2C and we need to create uh, those uh, business models and those partnerships. In order to do that, uh, with TM Forum and with Fireware, now we have the building blocks and we are able to create the collaboration. And the collaboration will leverage at the same time the open data and the hubs and the platform provided by Fireware. Uh, but uh, TM Forum uh, can bring also all the APIs which can help to manage the ecosystems, which can help also to monetize uh, the ecosystem. And monetization is really what is important if we really want to grow and to scale. Smart City is a complex system that needs to react to events. Uh, application today are, are mostly uh, being done on, on real-time data. It's a major, major challenge for any smart city in the world to actually architect the foundation, if you wish, the infrastructure, so that you can uh, combine uh, uh, and uh, harvest that, uh, that, that uh, you know, the, those real-time uh, data feeds. So I think on, 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 at that level, Fireware is offering a, a very scalable solution that is pluggable into many uh, IoT data sources. Um, and on top of that, what you can build, you can actually uh, build data services, okay? Data services are not equal to data API. They are actually uh, something, okay? A service is something that you can offer to the marketplace, yeah? Uh, so you can combine this real-time data into a data service, offer that to the marketplace with some pricing policy, some configuration uh, uh, parameters, and that's really where the TMF APIs are so powerful, because this is really management of an offering. At this stage, we'd say we're already working with quite a bit of historic data, and that's been useful but it's as we open up the infrastructure and get real-time data that this thing turns from being kind of interesting and good to wow, we're creating something that's really of the future. And that's what we, we're doing this year. So we'll start announcing different results of that in the course of the next few months. Of course, you need to provide that data in a standard way. And all the cities have to do this using the same mechanisms, the same API, the same common information models, because this is what all together would allow to create the vision of a digital single market, an ecosystem where an entrepreneur can develop one application and then um, aim to replicate that in multiple cities uh, using the actual data that each of the cities provide. That's another uh, very uh, interesting value of what's happening with, between Fireware, TMF, and other standard organizations. The capability of standardizing the real-time data is quite interesting. So let's talk about offering those, those different data feeds, if you wish, in real time to the smart city so that they can be consumed and composed and aggregated and, and, and uh, all kind of new product offerings, right, based on those, those data services. Well, in order to achieve that, you need to what we call onboard the partners within the smart city. This is, uh, this is where the TMF APIs, uh, where the TMF APIs are so useful. We have a lot of experience in B2B, B2C, and 
And, and we actually have derived API so that we can onboard partners with specific agreements about the data that is distributed by the smart city uh, marketplace. This is uh, uh, highly important. Uh, the other thing that is important is that there will be privacy agreements about that. Uh, the, those data streams. This is also enabled by our API. We call them privacy API. There's all kinds of uh, extremely interesting topics uh, uh, happening around this old notion of data economy and IoT data service platform that we frankly are, are uh, uh, co-creating with, with FireWare. Well, the whole emergence of the Internet of Things and a smart city is going to blend what is my private data and what is public data owned by the commons. So when I get in my car and cause traffic, is that my data because it's my car, or is it the city's data who owns the road who's causing traffic and needs to resolve it? And uh, we haven't yet gone through the profundity of that debate. Now, you have to maintain that at the end of the day, a data belongs to an individual. Because if it belongs to a corporate entity, you enter a world of sort of statism, which has never particularly worked well in, if you look at history. So at the end of it, you've got to say the data belongs to me. Therefore, maybe I can only access certain public goods if I contribute my data. So if I contribute my data about my car journey, it reduces the amount of traffic. So I have to agree to that. So now you get to something that you might call identity as a service which doesn't really exist yet, but I think it will come within the next five or 10 years where my, I, I choose when I give my data out. My identity is used by other bodies around health service, education, you know, the roads, and I actually am in charge of when it's given out, but I also can only benefit from collective wisdom if I agree to give my individual data out. Now, this is a whole uh, territory that we are just beginning to think through and it's a uh, new business models, it's new, new emerging ways. But that's the promise of the smart city where my city gets cleverer as I interact with it, but I have to give up some of my data to make that happen. All these elements are what are brought together to support the economy of data uh, by the city. On one side, NGSI, because it's what the, the way the city will uh, enable to exchange data in real time, provided by the city, but also by third parties. Second, a data publication platform with all the necessary extensions, which is seconds with all the necessary extensions to offer NGSI-based data and also deal with access rights uh, man management, right? And the third aspect is the PM4 and APIs that would allow for those cases where you are paying or, or, or subscribing to get access to a given data source, uh, be able to monetize and deal with all the revenue share mechanisms. The FIWA relationship has been extremely important. So we initiated the relationship really at this event one year ago. And in just one year, it has uh, become a very mature relationship and we're very pleased with that. I see that Team Forum as, as the kind of industry collaborative organisation, building out open APIs for industry, um, collaborated with, with, with Fiverr, who is providing data and APIs as a really highly complementary relationship. We've been working on collaborative R&D, we work on collaborative uh, development of open hacks, we work on collaborative product uh, delivery. So it's a very holistic relationship. TM Forum is, is global and we continuously promote uh, Fireware to our partners when we're doing work in the US and different places because we want to have this uh, global footprint, a partnership that has a global footprint. So I think we all need to go global fully, all of us. Our, our APIs need to be adopted fully by industry and um, that's, a, that's a great relationship because we can complement each other as we, as we go through that. I think Fireware and, and, and similar approaches are incredibly important because they provide the basis for collaboration and open integration of a whole load of providers and, and solutions. And as a city, we don't want to be making a technology choice now that locks us into a particular approach. We're much more interested in a, a very organic approach which keeps things very open and allows for maximum collaboration or innovation because 
We don't know the answers, but one thing we do know is that there are a lot of answers out there. Uh, but we just need to make sure we've got the right arrangements, including approaches, as I say, compatible with Fiware, which uh, allow us to open, be open to that innovation. I think it's really useful to create a market uh, between cities, and the Open and Agile Cities is a good way of discussing that market. And, and Fiware hopefully has an important role to play in the creation of that market, because you have to have scale, and therefore you need replicability, to actually get to many of these things. Now many of us, including Bristol, have a role to play in shaping what this all is, but we've got to get to some common standards. If you have a market, the pace of development will become real, as opposed to a bunch of hodgepodge cottage industry cities here and there. So the more standards there are, and they're agreed amongst a big enough scale, the faster this whole thing will go. And I think that's very exciting for all of us who are involved in it. I think we're going to see an evolution over the next coming sort of three to five to six to seven years where you have a group of cities who come together to actually agree on a common set of approaches on the right, in the right topic areas. Uh, and they will, they will come to terms on how to do this, they will, they will design a common joint future. Then you have another group of cities who will just carry on as they do today. But in five, six, seven years from now, this first group, they will have, they will, they will, they will have shared an already investment and they will be at a completely different level of, of innovation than this other group of cities. Uh, so it, I think it will become part of that sort of fundamental backbone that the city needs to uh, address and they need to start thinking about it and addressing it now rather than uh, in five, ten years from now.